One of the best things I ever did for my Grizzly Super X3 mill drill, other than converting it to CNC that is, was to get a Tormach tooling system quick change collet and tool holder set up. This is great. I just can't tell you how much time this saves me when I'm working on projects and have to change out tools, whether I'm using the mill in manual mode or CNC. Now part of that is due to my pneumatic drawbar, which lets me change tools with the push of a button, but I'll save that for another video. What I really want to show you right now is how to make your own tool holders for the Tormach tool system using the Super X3 mill as a lathe. The Tormach system consists of a special R8 or Morse Taper 3 collet, a little shorter than usual, and it's been ground with a flat face, and is sized to hold tools with a 3 quarter inch shank. The tool system depends on a series of adapters that have an accurate 3 quarter inch mounting shank to be held in the collet on one end, and come in a variety of options on the other end. There are several sizes of end mill holders, there are drill chuck adapters with various Jacobs tapers, an ER20 collet closer, they've got boring and tapping heads, there are even a variety of modular insert tools such as face mills and ball end mills. The tool holders from Tormach are nicely made, they're hardened and ground and not at all expensive, but once you get used to using a system like this, you're going to find that every tool you use all the time wants to get fit with a 3 quarter inch mounting shank. I'm talking about center and spot drills, the drill bit sizes that you use all the time center finders, edge finders, I've even got a Sharpie marker holder. So even though the genuine Tormach tools are very reasonable in price, and I recommend getting a few for your best tools, you really can save yourself quite a lot of money if you can make them yourself. The first thing you're going to need is raw material. What I found worked best is one and a half inch diameter drill rod. The British call it silver steel. It's relatively inexpensive, it seems pretty tough, it cuts nicely on the mill and it leaves a nice finish and I was able to mail order it from places like Enco and McMaster Carr. I make a tool holder from a chunk of drill rod 3 inches long, which means I can get 12 holders out of the standard 36 inch length. At the current prices for oil hardening and water hardening drill rod, this results in a final price of around $5 each. Now if you're going to be cutting up one and a half inch diameter steel, you're not going to want to use a hacksaw or a chop saw. I have one of these metal cutting band saws that you can get from Grizzly or Harbor Freight, and it's probably the most used tool in my shop. It takes about eight to ten minutes to cut all the way through, so you can be cutting a tool holder on the mill while you're cutting out the next piece on the band saw. One warning though, I wouldn't leave the bandsaw cutting unattended. I found it's quite easy to stall the blade, and I've heard horror stories online about motors that get hot enough to melt down, so I always make sure I'm right there in the shop whenever I'm using the bandsaw. One other thing you're going to need is some kind of way to hold the stock in the spindle. I found this 4 inch 3 jaw chuck, just like you would find on a lathe, mounted on an R8 Arbor on eBay, and it's perfect in this application. There is a chance of introducing runout using a chuck like this, but as we'll see in a moment, this is a problem that takes care of itself. So now we have the stock and we have a way of holding it in the spindle. The last thing we need is a standard lathe tool held in the milling vise to actually do the cutting. I found this diamond point carbide insert holder on eBay that is big enough to grip easily in the vise and be rigid enough for the cuts I take. You just need to set it up at an angle that lets it contact the stock without rubbing on either the turning or the facing cuts. I divide the cutting operations into two sections. First, I cut the 3 quarter inch shank that will be used to hold the tool holder in the Tormach collet. Then I turn the blank over and make turning cuts to form the body of the tool holder, as well as some angle cuts to form what I call the nose. To set up the initial positions of the cutting tool, set the y-axis on the mill to the exact center line of the stock and then bring the tool up with the z-axis controls to just touch at the bottom of the stock, zero the z-axis at this point, then back off and jog the x-axis until you contact the outside of the stock and zero this axis as well. 
I made up two different G-code files. The G-code is something I made up by hand with a little help from the Mach 3 turn wizards. There's not much going on here, just a lot of linear moves cutting ten thousandths at a reasonable feed rate with a retract and a rapid back to the starting point. I make a couple of spring passes at the end of each file to make up for the extra flex I seem to get when doing lathe work on the mill. And then I did a final pass taking a one thousandths cut at a slow rate for a nice finish. So we have the blank mounted in the chuck. The cutting tool is aligned and positioned to the initial coordinates needed by the CNC program and the G-code is loaded into Mach 3. All we have to do now is push cycle start and sit back and watch the show. I found the drill rod to cut very nicely at a feed rate of about 7 inches per minute with a 10 thousandths depth of cut. The chip just curled away like a coil spring. But be careful, the chips are hot and super sharp, so don't use your bare hands to clear them away from the cutter. Be sure to use gloves or even better a wooden dowel so your hands don't get anywhere near the chuck or the chips. I'm cutting using a spindle speed of around 500 RPM. The cutting oil I'm using is just sulfurized thread cutting oil I bought at Home Depot. It stinks like hell, but it does the job and it doesn't cost very much. The SX3 mill is not as rigid as a lathe, so you want to keep it to light cuts at a reasonable feed rate and slow RPM and the cuts work out fine. Once we have the three quarter inch shank turned down, it's time to take the lathe chuck out and replace the Tormach tool holder collet in the spindle. We turn the blank around and we mount the shank in the collet for the next set of cuts. This is where, as I mentioned before, if we had any runout introduced in the lathe chuck, it'll be corrected now as the stock rotates in the mill spindle. Any eccentricity will be cut away in these second set of operations and it will result in a tool holder that is exactly aligned with the center line of the mill. Just like when we were cutting the shank, we take ten thousandths cuts at a feet of seven inches per minute to reduce the diameter to form the body of the holder. There's no hard and fast rule as to how big the body should be. I leave it a little bigger for the larger end mills and cut it a little deeper for the smaller tools. Once the body diameter is cut, I take angled cuts to form the nose of the tool holder. Again, there's no rule as to how long to make it, just cut it so there's plenty of meat left when drilling the hole for the tool.
Once all the cuts have been made, I usually take a file and break all the sharp corners, just to make it a little bit easier to handle. If I'm concerned about the final finish, I use a couple of grits of emery cloth to polish it up. But the finish as cut by the mill is perfectly acceptable with just a little bit of file work to knock off the sharp spots. Now all that remains is to drill the hole in the body to mount our desired cutting tool. There's a little work to be done to make sure that the hole is exactly on the center line, but there's not enough time to go into that in this video, so we'll pick this up in the next one.